Recently, two videos have come out using, or should I say abusing, the BVG theorem to try and show the universe began to exist. One by a person named Olaf, which was a reply to Skydive Phil, and the other from Dr. Craig videos titled How Atheists Take Alexander Vilenkin Out of Context. Theists, especially Christian theists, are very hasty and eager to use the BVG theorem to show the universe began to exist because they know, at least the educated ones, that if the universe began to exist, then that leaves the atheists in an extremely poor, arguably fatal position relative to their atheism. Because if the universe began to exist, then the atheist is left with only two options to either support extreme irrationality by saying the universe came from nothing or to avoid that to say the universe was caused by the supernatural i.e. God since the universe is at the very least all of the natural realm and if the natural realm began to exist then the only dynamic left to cause it is the supernatural most atheists based on my experience don't seem to realize this or they don't care or they maybe aren't educated in philosophy enough to know the ramifications of the universe beginning to exist. So, in my experience, most atheists seem not to care at all to defend an eternal universe, nor do they seem to care if the universe is eternal or not. Theists are also very hasty and eager to use the BVG theorem to show the universe began to exist because they can no longer, in all honesty, abuse the Big Bang Theory anymore to claim and show the universe had a beginning. They were able to do that for a long time, but it has now become too widely known that the Big Bang Theory does not and never did show the universe began to exist because it's based on the geometric theory of gravitation known as general relativity, which breaks down and becomes invalid at the quantum scale. So, theists like William Lane Craig, to avoid being outdated and accused of dishonesty, needed a new scientific piece of evidence to use as proof that the universe began to exist, which they realize is extremely fatal to atheism. That's where the BVG theorem comes in. The problem is, the BVG theorem also does not show the universe began to exist. The BVG theorem does not show the universe began to exist. It only shows that inflation cannot be extended infinitely or eternally into the past. Inflation at some point must have a beginning because inflation is geodesically incomplete. It can extend eternally into the future, but not eternally or infinitely into the past. The BVG theorem was basically an answer to some cosmologists' attempts to use the mechanism of inflation to prove an eternal universe, or more appropriately, an eternal multiverse. Indeed, all one has to do is consult the abstract of the very BVG theorem paper itself and see that it does not and is not showing the universe began to exist, but rather that, quote, inflationary models require physics other than inflation to describe the past boundary of the inflating region of space-time." If you study the paper in depth, it will even tell you what the chief result of the theorem is. The chief result of the paper is, quote, unless the average expansion condition can somehow be avoided for all past directed geodesics, inflation alone is not sufficient to provide a complete description of the universe and some new physics is necessary in order to determine the correct conditions at the boundary. Notice where Bohr, Guth, and Vilenkin say inflation alone is not sufficient. That was the whole point of the paper, to address the attempt by some cosmologists to use the inflationary mechanism by itself to ground an eternal universe slash multiverse. And the paper, to paraphrase, is basically saying, no, you can't do that. You can't use inflation to get you an eternal universe slash multiverse because inflation at some point has to have a beginning. A starting point because inflation is not itself geodesically incomplete. Not that the universe has a beginning, but inflation. That exponential expansion has to have an antecedent cause. It can't extend eternally or infinitely into the past. So why, if what the BVG theorem does is right in the paper itself, do some theists like William Lane Craig insist on using it to support the notion that the universe began to exist? Well, you can argue that the reason why is because they are dishonest. They don't care about the truth, 
so much as they care about bastardizing any science they can to support their desired conclusion of God existing and the supernatural being true. Similar to how Johann and Rotz bastardized the delayed choice quantum eraser experiment to claim that matter and energy don't exist or that there is nothing behind our observations. So the BBG theorem does not give you a universe beginning to exist. Only that we need physics other than inflation to describe the antecedent of the initial inflationary event. Even worse for the theist that continues to try and bastardize his theorem to claim the universe began to exist is that there are apparently exceptions to the theorem itself that are still being taken seriously in the literature. For example, you can have a cyclic model that has identical expansion and contraction and that would satisfy the BVG theorem's exception condition. Another one is to have a model with a finite amount of expansion over infinite time. Another answer to the BVG theorem, which arguably falls under the physics other than inflation part, rather than being a direct exception to the theorem, is to propose a static asymptotic pass using a closed friedman robinson walker spacetime as the antecedent to the initial inflationary event. With an appropriate scale factor, this makes the universe geodesically complete both to the future and to the past. Another answer to the BVG theorem is to violate the geometrical assumptions via the universe having open space sections and the Hubble expansion being greater than zero in the past by again using a closed Robertson-Walker universe with k equaling one, which avoids both open space sections and the Hubble expansion always being greater than zero in the past. You can also use ordinary matter with minimally coupled scalar fields with a past eternal Einstein state universe evolving into an inflationary universe. The instability of the Einstein state universe can be solved by the loop quantum gravity, a brain world cosmology, using the Starobinsky model for radiative corrections, or employing exotic matter. Another huge nail in the BVG theorem from people who bastardized it to prove the universe began to exist comes from Abbe Ashtakar in a paper dated August 22, 2011, eight years after the BVG theorem paper. Professor Ashtakar says, quote, Recall first that the powerful singularity theorems of Penrose, Hawking, and others strongly suggest that if matter satisfies standard energy conditions, the Big Bang singularity is inevitable in general relativistic cosmology. However, the inflaton with a quadratic potential violates the strong energy condition. Therefore, in the initial discussions of inflationary scenarios, one could hope that the presence of such an inflaton by itself may suffice to avoid the initial singularity. However, Borg, Guth, and Vilenkin subsequently proved a new singularity theorem with a novel feature that it does not use an energy condition and is thus not tied to general relativity. This important result is sometimes paraphrased to imply that there is no escape from the Big Bang. This is not the case since the new theorem was motivated by ideas from eternal inflation. It assumes that the expansion of the universe is always positive and this assumption is violated in all bouncing scenarios, including LQC. Thus, the LQC resolution of the Big Bang singularity can evade the original singularity theorems of general relativity even when matter satisfies all energy conditions because Einstein's equations are modified due to quantum gravity effects and it evades the more recent singularity theorem of which is not tied to Einstein's equations because the LQC universe has a contracting phase in the past." Unquote. So here we have Professor Ashtakar proposing a contracting phase and for what I saw he seems to have no issue with what Professor Vilenkin claims about a contracting phase and telling all kinds of messy singularities that were prevented from ever reaching the expanding phase. And if all that isn't enough to put an end to the dishonest notion that the BVG theorem shows the universe began to exist, we have an extremely recent paper from Alexander Vilenkin himself titled Collapse of Simple Harmonic Universe, dated November 4th, 2011. In it, he writes, quote, It has been recently shown that the space-time of an inflationary universe is necessarily past incomplete, even though inflation may be eternal to the future. All past directed time-like and null geodesics, except maybe a set of measure zero, reach the boundary of the inflating region of space-time in a finite proper time, finite affine length, in the null case. 
This indicates that inflation must have had some sort of a beginning. One possibility is that the universe could have spontaneously nucleated out of nothing. Unquote. Professor Vilenkin there is referring directly to his BVG theorem paper. But notice that in that explication, he does not at all say that his paper proved the universe began to exist. Just that inflation must have had some sort of a beginning, which is what I have been saying from the very start.